Hi, the book I'm reviewing today is called The Sheikh CEO, Lessons in Leadership from Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum by Dr. Yasser Jarar. I didn't buy this book from South Africa. Um, for those looking, I did, uh, my sister gifted this to me from Dubai, so I'm not sure if you can actually get it here. But what an absolutely fantastic read. There's just too much to learn. There's so many nuggets of wisdom in this book that I would highly recommend you get your hands on a copy of this. I'm gonna try and read a few extracts for you um, and it's definitely on my top 10 reading list for this year if you can get a copy of this book. The rise of Dubai did not happen overnight, but it did happen fast by historical standards. And if the past two decades are a guide, one might expect the next 20 years to bring us more surprises from Dubai. A city that has emerged as the unofficial hub of the new Silk Road, extending from China to Africa and beyond, and one of the most global actors in the world today. During the past decades, Dubai was doing more than just building skyscrapers, although they were the most obvious feature to the average observer. Dubai was building the three T's of its success story, transport, trade, and tourism. The decline of pearling affected the whole local economy, with suppliers catering for the pearling fleets, boat builders, and more all losing out. It also meant that there was little opportunity to build any infrastructure. Dubai experienced an extended period of economic hardship and poverty. This boom and bust, good fortune and subsequent times of hardship became ingrained in the leadership's mind and they recognized that to depend on any one sector, just like a species evolved to eat from a single food source, was a selective disadvantage, but understanding this dynamic turned it into a competitive edge. The airport itself was a major piece of the puzzle in establishing Dubai as a global aviation hub. The other piece was the Emirates airline. In the 1980s, Gulf Air operating out of Abu Dhabi was the main airline serving the UAE. In those days, it was not an obvious move to start a new airline in the region. Sheikh Mohammed recalls the story from 1985. Gulf Air owned by four of the Gulf Corporation Council states was using Dubai Airport as a hub and sought to put an end to the open skies policy to its own commercial benefit by limiting competition. They wanted to protect their market share and even set us a deadline of a few weeks to comply with canceling our open skies policy, said Sheikh Mohammed. They requested special treatment and clearly told Dubai that if they did not receive it, Gulf Air would decrease its services to Dubai. That threat, in hindsight, was the end of Gulf Air and a blessing in disguise for Dubai. Sheikh Mohammed did not waste a moment. We refused their request for a simple reason. We believe that competition and not protectionism is healthiest for our country. We rented two aeroplanes from Pakistan and created an airline that we called Emirates. The success of the airline was so phenomenal that competitors started questioning its success. Some accused it of being a subsidiary of the Dubai government, hence getting preferential treatment. In fact, at one point, the CEO of Qantas, Geoff Dixon, said, anybody that can control the airline, government policy, and the airport can make a lot of money. Needless to say, that was not true. The Emirates executives openly denied the allegations. Their books were audited by an international firm, PricewaterhouseCoopers, which said that the auditors attributed Emirates' strength to his business model rather than any special treatment. Emirates benefited from the same business-friendly policies as all companies in Dubai. Dubai International Airport is open 24 hours a day, while many other hub airports are limited to daylight hours. It pays no corporation tax and has access to low-cost skilled labor from across the region, meaning its labor costs are a lower proportion of its overall budget compared to other major global airlines. That, in a nutshell, summarizes how Sheikh Mohammed sees the world. Everybody starts small. We all begin life as a single cell. Every business starts as one person with an idea. How fast you go and how far you get is in your hands. The bigger your, version, the bigger your vision, the bigger your achievement will be. 
Will you stumble on the way? Perhaps, but we cannot let fear keep us small. We have to be brave to be big. The Sheikh has a big vision and endless ambition, and he never lets his team settle for conventional or average. One of the sayings that I really enjoyed from this book from His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum is, do not think of small starts, dream of big finishes. On the 20th of November, 2013, Jihad al Qazim, a prominent Arab journalist, wrote in the United Kingdom-based Arabic daily newspaper, Al Hayat. I recall one day in the 1990s when Sheikh Mohammed took me for a drive to show me around Dubai. The first stop was the Palm Jumeirah. The Sheikh was showing me this mega project while telling me that his main focus was human development, not infrastructure. He then stopped at the airport to show the major expansion project, which was to build the capacity for 130 million passengers per year. I was amazed by the enormity of the plans and asked him what he was trying to achieve. I live in London, home of Heathrow, one of the world's largest airports with a capacity for 60 million passengers. Where is Dubai going to get double that number of passengers? He smiled and said that his issue with my question was that I was asking about today and he was talking about 2020 and beyond. His vision is genuine and genuine vision is contagious. Yasser Harab, an Emirati author who worked in the Sheikh's executive office, talks about his contagious vision and confidence. People say that a successful leader is the one who inspires people to trust and follow him. And the distinguished leader is the one who inspires people to trust and believe in themselves. Sheikh Mohammed did both. After the Wall Street Journal criticized some of the projects in 1980, it came back to praise in 2006 saying, Dubai has aggressively leveraged its role as a crossroads to develop a diversified economy. There is another lesson in the story. Do not be distracted by naysayers and those who are critical of ambition and future vision. Many suffer short-sightedness and can only see the world as it is today. Being able to imagine tomorrow's world is a critical leadership capability. Sheikh Mohammed's new Dubai region was also a tough region that has its fair share of political instability corruption, complex labor legislations, and substandard infrastructure, a situation that would discourage many to bet on this region, let alone invest in it. But to Sheikh Mohammed, this was a potential opportunity, and Dubai was the physical center of it. From that early vision, the Dubai we know today was born. Repeatability works when done well and fast. Another saying that I really enjoyed from the Sheikh is this one. We must finish our projects on time because time is our most precious commodity. Everything else can be replaced, but not time. That week in March 2019, Sheikh Mohammed tweeted, In 1999, many people questioned our idea to establish Dubai Internet City in the desert. Two years ago, Amazon acquired the multi-billion AEDSUK.com and today Uber acquired Kareem for 11 billion dirhams. These giant companies flourished from the desert of Dubai. It was the beginning of a range of projects that tested the limits of the day's engineering and construction capabilities leading also to the creation of the World Islands, a collection of 300 man-made islands shaped into the continents of the world, located off the coast of Dubai. It still astounds me when I dwell on the achievement. We created a $23 billion asset for our city, essentially by piling a billion tons of sand and rock on the sea floor, Sheikh Mohammed says. Many cities in the region and the world attempted similar ventures, only to be caught up in delays, challenges, and the lack of a coherent plan. In Dubai, the Sheikh made sure he took bold decisions, secured first mover advantage and delivered fast by saying done. And the quote I leave you with from His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum is, everything has risk, everything. That should never stop anything. We can and should deploy good risk management frameworks for better outcomes, but never stop moving forward and innovating. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you're reading and if you've read this book as well. Thank you.